clear the issues, their fires backup protection, um, and that's basically included in the monthly, um, which depending on how that goes, I mean that extra sixty bucks, or sixty bucks a month. Um, we we'll see how that goes. We can't do that at any time. Just have to give them thirty days notice. But uh, that gives uh, myself a laptop. Gives Ken a new laptop. It's uh, laptop for Julia and Clint and uh, to manage the website, and then a uh, laptop for the planning commission secretary, so that he's no longer uh, using his own laptop for that. Um, so the total is ten thousand one hundred, and then uh, we added a basically a two thousand dollar cushion for the tower storage, and then if um, any electrical updates might be needed um, for the copier. It needs to be a fully grounded outlet here in the hall. Um, and looking around, that, that might be a grounded outlet. Um, you know, I'm not an electrician. Um, can you look at that? Or no, I have not looked at that. And whether or not we need to add a dedicated uh, plug coming up through the floor. I'm not looking to upgrade all the electrical in this building. Um, yeah, yeah, especially if you put the tower stuff in here, you need to put a dedicated circuit in with a surge protector. Yeah, right. yeah, they'll bring surge protectors along with that. That kind of gives us that two thousand dollar buffer there. You know, I'm not planning on using all that, but it just gives us enough um, if we have to get an electrician in here or you know, we can do that. So but um, I was just trying to get you know, technology into this place and upgrade you know, basically the, the computers that we do have um, and have a high speed copy or printer and be able to print out board brackets and uh, you know, can't be able to print the tax bills here um, you know, through that machine as well, higher speed. So. Okay, so, yeah. Any questions, discussion? on that or Next up, uh, the website, the Shoemaker Group. Um, we'll kind of revisit that one once we get uh, some new computers in here. Um, look at, uh, I think, what you say, their mid level or silver package that they had. Yeah, and possibly the future stuff. I don't, I don't think we need to go with the three thousand dollar backup. Just something that you can, they can teach you how to update yeah. that. And I'll talk to them online. I mean, they've sent me the information, but I haven't reached back out since they're giving me the laptop. So okay. um, I'll talk to them online and we can make a decision next month. I don't know if they've got a laptop, so I'll need to talk to them. Yeah, they said uh, the soonest might be early February. Um, depends on uh, when they can acquire the equipment, the, the laptops and whatnot. <coughs> uh, get them built and then get them out here. So, <coughs> beginning. Beginning of early mid February, um, we can look to get that stuff. So. Um, next up, the PO box uh, in Howard City that is set up. Um, we're just trying to get all the addresses of anything that is billed to us updated. Like Ken said, we've got DTE updated now, we've got consumers updated, we've got you know, 
anything and everything that's coming in. Um, we're still getting mail forwarded from Colleen back to the P.O. box. We're getting mail forwarded from Phyllis. We're giving them to Kathy from Phyllis. And then it's remailed. Um, the MTA said that the clerk is 100% responsible for gathering the mail uh, from the post office. We do have a new mailbox sorter uh, for each one of the board personnel, as well as the assessor and the planning commission, which you've got their own individual mailboxes over there. Um, and Ken gathers the mail from the uh, PO box, sorts it, and then uh, people can pick the stuff up here. So, um, so that's square away. Next up, well, we've got the conflict of interest policy. Um, back at our first board meeting, uh, we presented a conflict of interest policy to the board. Um, four of us signed it at that time, and it was presented to the planning commission, and there were, they had uh, issue with it. So we had uh, Bloom and Sluggett review uh, the one-page conflict of interest policy that we had to a now five-page conflict of interest policy, which pretty much encompasses anything and everything that you could think of. Um, breaks down to the familial relationships with regards to uh, elected or appointed officials. Um, it covers everything under the sun. They have uh, done this for multiple cities, uh, additional townships, and combine this, a uh, couple of them into this. Um, basically, if you have a conflict uh, of interest, you are to recuse yourself, you are to report that to the board, and recuse yourself from any discussion um, regarding the uh, conflict that you have. So. Any questions? Did everybody have a chance to look that over? I know it was just kind of delivered tonight. I didn't have a way to print in my house to get this info, so. This will be given to, once we approve this, this will be given to all board members to sign it, the deputies to sign it, the planning commission, uh, zoning board of appeals, and the board of review, just to make sure everybody under the sun or any township employees are covered, um, knowing what the township has adopted. Any discussion? All right, and I'm going to make a motion that we go ahead and approve the latest conflict of interest policy um, effective today. And we got a second. Did you have? And all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. This will re be revisited annually to all employees of the township, board members, and commissions. Alright, so that's taken care of. And next up we got uh, checks and bills to pay.
Just cover something else while they're finishing that up. Uh, the Winfield Hustlers uh, 4-H Club will be back here uh, this Sunday at one o'clock uh, for their actual business meeting. Uh, I met with them in December here uh, for the cookie exchange, and I'll be interested to see how uh, um, their business meeting goes. Uh, apparently, the kids <laughs> tend to run that meeting, so it'll be interesting to see for sure. It's um, the first lesson of parliamentary procedure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So and they, they had one uh, uh, girl stood in for it uh, at the December meeting, and uh, then they had their cookie exchange, and it was off to the races from there. So I'll be here to let them in on Sunday.
All right, so then is there a motion to go ahead and approve the bills to pay? Motion to pay bills. I'll go ahead and second that. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion to pass. All right, next up, uh, Board of Review. Um, I got information from Andy Ross today. We've got uh, upcoming meetings in March. There's an organizational meeting, uh, March 7th, 7 p.m. And then the Board of Review protest dates are March 15th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and March 16th from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, Andy Ross let me know that uh, the state mandates it to be, I think, some. Monday, but the amount of townships that he covers as the assessor, um, we have to have a resolution to adopt alternate start dates for March 2023, July 2023, and December 2023 Board of Review meetings. Um, to adopt the alter alternate start dates as follows uh, for the March Board of Review second meeting in March, uh, which can be either Tuesday or the Wednesday following the second Monday in March. For the July Board of Review, an alternate date during the week of the third Monday in July. And then for the December Board of Review, an alternate date during the week of the second Monday in December. So I need uh, a motion to approve that. And I have to call on the state required Monday. We just have to have this part of our Board of Review packet as well as the clerk's. Um, files. And I got a second resolution uh, regarding that also. So. I make a motion that we accept that. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Next up, a resolution to adopt uh, taxpayers and non-resident taxpayers to protest in writing by letter or email for Board of Review to adopt the governing body of township city to permit, to permit resident taxpayers and non-resident taxpayers to file a protest to the Board of Review in writing by letter or email without personal appearance. I need a motion for that as well. Second that. And then all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Township credit card. Where are we at? The bank still wants a, uh, a policy uh, when we're at. Uh, you, may, you have a policy. You have a policy. It's in your policy book. We okay. have a credit card policy. Okay. Yeah, we do. You need to look in there. If you've got it. You got it in your information. I have a shit. I got a policy book. It might just be a folder. Well, maybe it's just in the folder. meeting to have the three of us as authorized users on that card. This would be a township.
Next up, uh, I know at the last meeting we had uh, spoken regarding the Masters Road Bridge Project. I got a uh, call today uh, from Mark with the Road Commission. He got an updated price, uh, which is drastically less expense to the township. Uh, the original cost that he had given us was around $75,000. Um, total cost on the contract he gave us today is $44,167.31. So almost a $30,000 reduction in price to rebuild that bridge. Um, so he's looking for approval uh, from us because the company that's going to be doing the bridge work wants to get rolling on this thing as soon as you know, middle to late February um, to get this thing rebuilt um, at this price. So uh, I know we've talked about waiting until the budget hearing all that, but we've got ARPA funds available. Um, we can't use ARPA funds for road. Yes, you can. It's part of um, it's, uh, community improvement. Community improvement, but also um, back over the board. <laughs> Brain fart. Um, uh, infrastructure. Yes, ARPA funds can be used for infrastructure. Which is also road and bridges improvement. So I would say that we should take advantage of this and follow through with uh, Mark at the Road Commission uh, to get this bridge rebuilt, um, saving us you know, thirty thousand dollars for the original cost on that. Any discussion. Restricted to how we spend the, that money out of the ARPA fund. So. Yeah. Well, I'm going to make a motion that we go ahead and pay this contract for the Road Commission of $44,167.21 uh, for the Road Commission for the Masters Bridge project to take place uh, early on in 2023. Second. Okay. And let's do a roll call vote. Random. Okay. Uh, Steve? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Ms. Gilbert? Yes. Mayors, yes. And Brian? Yes. Next up, uh, we've got uh, Planning Commission. Um, based on digging into the files and the records um, of the township uh, and talking with the attorneys, um, basically the terms, as George said, they were you know, just continuing to roll over. Um, at that rate, um, basically the current Planning Commission has lifetime appointments. That is not correct policy or procedures on how to deal with the planning commission. Each time, you know, so say the original planning commission information that I have uh, from Phyllis's notes and records she gave me, none of these records have start dates or end dates regarding the current planning commission's term. So the attorney said basically Except for, except for Kenny and Jake, who her latest update was January 2022, Kenny Jones and Jake Newman have one year term. So their terms as of January this year are done. Um, again, there's no start dates 
or end dates, none of their terms or oaths of office were reapplied. So in essence, what we're doing tonight is reconstituting the planning commission as all terms of the current planning commission members are expired and basically starting fresh. So I've also got a amendment to the original planning commission ordinance. Um, we're going to amend section 2A ordinance number 6-9 Section 2A of the ordinance number is hereby amended to read in full as follows. The commission shall consist of a five member appointed by the township board to be qualified to be a member of and remain a member of the commission. An, 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 an individual shall meet all the following qualifications. Shall be a qualified elector of the township shall not hold any elected office or employment with the township unless an ex officio, shall not be declared a candidate for any political office except this condition shall not apply to the township board representative to the commission and shall comply with any policies adopted by resolution of the township board with respect to ethical obligations not otherwise inconsistent with Act 33. So in essence, what we're doing is we're taking our nine-member planning commission and cutting it down to a five-member planning commission. And that planning commission will consist of the following members and their term lengths. Ken Cool will have a three-year term ending in January 26. George Hubbard will have a two-year term ending in January 2025. Ken Fisk will have a one-year term ending in January 2024. Julia is our board liaison, and we'll have a new appointee, Derek Dickerson, with a one-year term ending in January 2024. All new oaths will be given at the January 23rd Planning Commission meeting, and we will proceed with proper information and documentation from there. They can review the conflict of interest at that time, and we will basically you know, start over. That's the information I've gathered from the attorney on how to do this based on the lack of prior documentation or information regarding that. I think I could dig out all that information if you wanted me to. From where? Uh, from print outs from the past. Uh, the when their term was up. I think you already decided to go in a different direction. Well, anybody's terms that was I mean, I'm looking back at Phyllis's information and, you know, if it's at the board level versus, you know, something else, I don't I see it. this would be two or three years old. If anybody had a three-year term, their term was expired. So. Why the reason that it should be enough? What do you want? In my observation of a nine-member planning commission, we have the largest commission in the county. And seeing nine members up there, nothing is getting accomplished. Where if we condense it as almost every other township in this county has a five-member planning commission, five people can converse easier and better, more effectively than a nine-member. Plus, it saves the township on average of $160 per meeting, um, cutting it from nine to five. Any other discussion regarding that? So we need a motion to pass this ordinance then first, right? We need a, a motion to reconstitute the planning commission, and then we need a motion to approve this ordinance, uh, amendment to the ordinance. Student the Planning Commission. Say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Aye. Um, okay. Motion passed. Um, actually, we need a motion to approve the amendment to the Planning Commission ordinance, ordinance cutting it to five.
Shield the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion passed. Days for Julia, Ryan, and myself. And for Steve and Kathy. Uh, next up, I need a motion to approve the five members listed here for the revised planning commission, which include uh, Ken Poole on a three year, George Hubbard on a two year, Ken Fisk on a one year, and new appointee Derek Dickerson on a one year term. I'll go ahead and make that motion then. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve Ken Cool, George Hubbard, Ken Fisk, and Derek Dickerson to the five member planning commission, which will take effect upon the day following publication of this notice and amendment in the Daily News. I do have one question for you. Sure. Who are you going to put on the CBA from that? That's something that I've got to work on. I'm more than likely. Ken Cool expressed an interest on CBA uh, as a licensed builder and contractor. I think he knows you know, well enough of uh, the zoning and construction. Um, and I think he'd be a good addition to the CBA from the PC days. And I've got, a, I've got a call on the attorney regarding the CBA and the prior um, the documentation regarding that too. In terms regarding that. A second to agree this uh, five member planning commission. I do a second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Say yay and nay. I'm sorry, 